Buddha. morning everybody happy thursday it's almost the end of the week hopefully you're all having a good week having a good day how's everybody doing today let me know in the chat um you know the yankees didn't get the sweep but they won the series so another series won. you know i'll take a series win any day of the week i will take two out of three games every day of the week uh the chat is on fire let me know how you're all doing today how is everybody doing let me know uh, looks like we are on fire real quick, guys. If you haven't yet, uh, please smack that like button. If you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button. I'm on the road to 600 subscribers and I would love to get there as quickly as possible and share this out with anybody, you know, um, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Uh, it would mean a lot to me. So let's see who we got in the chat. Nosebleed section. Good morning. Uh, have a good day, man. Uh, I know you can't make it, but have a good day. FL Diver, always in the place. What's going on? Jonathan, good morning. Stephen B. Stephen B., my guy. What's going on, Stephen B.? Uh, good morning to you. Who else? Who else? We got Lou in the chat. How you doing, Lou? Excuse me. Dev Finch, good morning. How you doing, Dev? Let me know. Hopefully everything is well with you. So, <clears throat> yeah, Yankees beat the Miami Marlins two out of three. Uh, they couldn't get the sweep. They tried ry rallying a couple of times, but unfortunately uh, just didn't turn into anything. But uh, let me know how you all feel about uh, the Yankees winning two out of three. Uncle Tats in the building. What's going on, Uncle Tats? What's going on, bro? How you, how you doing, man? Uh, Jake Boss, good morning to you. Yeah, exactly, Jake Boss. Another series win. I'll take, I'll take two out of three every day of the week. I will take two out of three. I have no problems with that. Um, yeah, it, last night's game. Yeah, last night's game was a tough loss. It was. A, it was. A, you know, some bats were alive, some weren't, and we're gonna we're gonna get into that, right? Um, we're gonna get into a few things today. All right, there was a little bit of a debate between um, about about Anthony Volpe leading off, and some fans did not welcome it. Some fans did. I know there's been a lot of fans calling for Volpe to lead off. Um, I wasn't one of them, but you all let me know what you think, though. So you all let me know, was was it good to for, for Anthony Volpe to move up in the lineup? I know we're not sold on Glaber Torres being the line, uh, being the leadoff guy. He should be more in the five or six spot. At least that's what I think. But you all tell me what you think. But I think him, I, I think Volpe leading off, I think it was a little too soon. I think you should have just left him where he was. I mean, he... Didn't do too bad yesterday, right? But um, you know, I'm I'm one of those people that says uh, if it ain't if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So, but you all let me know what you think. Yeah, the the double plays are getting old. Um, let's see, FL Diver saying Volpe has the tools, but I don't think he is ready. Yeah, I I don't think so either. Um, you know, I think he should have just been left where he was. Uncle Tats is saying the at-bats from Volpe and Sobo, Soto will be lethal once Judge wakes up. Absolutely. Yeah, well, that foot's been a problem uh, for a while there. Sierra, what's up, Sierra? What's going on? How you feeling? How you doing? You're all over the place. You're, you're like me. Just in every stream, every chat, every Twitter space, you name it. Guys, if you haven't checked out the show that Sierra and I did on Sunday – Please go check it out. Uh, she absolutely killed it. She knows baseball. She knows Yankees. And uh, she'll put her foot down. Sierra, don't play. I'm, I'm, I'm just letting you all know that right now. Sierra, she don't play. Um, Jake is saying, I don't. I like Volpe leading off and Glaber in the middle of the order. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see who else. Torres shouldn't be leading off. I would try. Yeah, I would try Verdugo too. I'm, I'm in agreement with that there, uh, Stephen B. Uh, but. Yeah, I you know, I think you should give him – yeah, Sierra, tell me if you agree with this. I think you give him one more season. You give him this season to be consistent, hit well, and then maybe put him in the leadoff spot for 2025. What do you what do you all think about that? 
Lewis saying, I'm not really a fan of Volpe, but the kid did well. Why are you not a fan of Volpe? I, 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 like, I would love to know, bro. I wouldn't have believed it. If you told me that the Yankees were going to be 10-3 and without Cole, without DJ, without Efros, without Trevino, would I have believed that this team would have been 10-3? and Would I have believed that this rotation could have could have held it together? I believe the rotation could have been fine, but would have been fine, but I don't think it would have been a 10-3 record. So, <clears throat> DJ's feet wrecking the ball half of us. Yeah, that foot, yeah, his feet, his foot is a problem. Um, series win was in hand. I have no issue with moving Volpe this early in the season. All right, Uncle Tats. All right, I, 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 I could respect that. I respect that take. Um, I think, D, yeah, well, you know, we'll just have to wait for Dominguez to be coming back and, you know, we'll see, you know, what happens. Anthony Garcia, senor, how are you, sir? Good morning to you, sir. Stephen B saying, I tried Dominguez lead off when he gets back. Power speed and get on base would be killing it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sierra, so you agree? Third season, Ver Verdugo is a leadoff hitter. Volpe would be a good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, 100%. 100%. So, and I, I, I just think, look, I want. All good with me, bro. All good with me. Always good, man. Good to see you. Good to see you, man. I'm, I, I haven't seen you in a little bit, so it's always good to see you, Anthony Garcia. Um, Yeah, so like I was saying, eventually I want Anthony Volpe to be in the leadoff spot. Like, I want him to be there. I want him to be at that number one spot. But, you know, let him continue developing. Let him continue improving. I just hope that um, I don't know. If, I don't know if last night's lineup was um, Boone's decision or was it an analytics thing. But I, I, I just wasn't feeling it. Like I wasn't mad about it, but I wasn't. I wasn't feeling it at uh, Volpe being at the leadoff spot. It's too soon. You know, we got to. We got to wait. Um, so Lou was saying he doesn't like his arm at shortstop. It, well, it, you know, there uh, people have their criticisms about him being a shortstop. I mean, he did win a gold glove. There, There is that, right? Um, you know, I know we've talked about other players in the Yankees, on the Yankees team being, you know, there, there are better shortstops out there than than Volpe. But right now he's the, he's the shortstop for this team, you know, unless the, unless the Yankees decide otherwise in the future. But we'll, we'll, we'll wait when that happens. Second base, I mean – He'd be perfect for second. And, you know, I was talking with Dane Huber about this on the Twitter spaces. And, uh, you know, he said that, you know, if you move Volpe to second base, he, he, he'd he easily be top. I, I believe he said top three or top five second baseman in all of Major League Baseball, which, you know, that was encouraging to hear, which I and I can I can see that. So uh, you like Volpe at the ninth spot. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I like I like Volpe where he was. Extend Glaber. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> you attacked me this morning about Glaber. <laughs> that was funny. Look, I'll talk about Gla I'll I'll talk about Glaber Torres here in just a moment too. Uh what ideal lineup? What what do you what do you, what do I think is the ideal lineup? Ken, good morning. What's going on? Guys, real quick too, I wanted to I wanted to bring this up um in about uh 20 minutes or so i'm gonna put the link to the open panel so i will do an open panel and i'll invite you all up one at a time and you all come in you know give your take and uh you know we'll we'll we'll, we'll continue the conversation so uh be on the lookout for the for the op uh for the for the link for the open panel um look i I like CWE Salute. What's going on, man? I like Glaber Torres. I really do. I, I am a fan of Glaber Torres, but does anybody see the Yankees giving him 20 to 25 million? Honestly. Again, I like him. I I, I like Glaber Torres. You know, I it, it, if the Yankees if he does part ways during free agency and he signs with another team, it, it's it, it's gonna it's gonna suck. So obviously Sierra says yes. I mean, because Sierra loves Glaber. Sierra loves Glaber. Anthony Garcia is saying not a chance. Okay. Jonathan is saying no. Deb is saying no. 
So I got three no's and one yeses. Look, as I said, I like Glaber. I really do. I just don't see the Yankees bringing him back. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Jake Boss is saying, I don't see it. We'll like to keep him, but someone will outbid us for sure. So Ken is saying if we miss out on Soto, we should re-sign him. Because, guys, look, Juan Soto is going to be a, a – he's going to be a top priority this offseason to, to sign him back. So, you know, do we do, do we – Forget about Soto and sign Glaber. I know Sierra saying to sign both, but um, I, Soto is going to be a top priority. They're going to do everything they can to lock him up. And I'm 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 curious to see what kind of money Soto is going to get. I still feel that uh, Soto will be si re-signed as a Yankee. I, I I'm confident that he wants to come back. What Sierra is saying, they could sign Soto for the rest of his. Career, 14 years, and re-sign Glaber, let Rizzo walk. Rizzo's going to walk. I that There's no doubt in my mind that Rizzo's going to walk. Um, I, Yeah, he's 100% 100 he's going to walk. All right, so. Yeah, if we sign Torres, we have to sign Burns. Uh, true. Yeah, I would like to have Corbin Burns, but. What's the likelihood of the Yankees uh, making a deal with him? Or try or trying to sign him? You know, I, I do is there is there a possibility of that? So move judge to first, bring up Jones and Dominguez. Uh, I don't I don't know. I don't know that judge. I don't know that they move Judge to first. I could see him, I could see him, uh, you know, rotating between DH and outfield. I could personally see that. I see Spencer Jones playing first base, although he's a he's a, Spencer Jones is an amazing outfielder. But I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what the Yankees do. There's no room for yeah. That's that's exactly FL Diver. That's that's um, that's the thing. There's no room for Torres. I mean, with the amount of infielders that the Yankees have in their farm system, um, you know, they have guys that are going to be ready. So, you know, it, they they could it, – it's not going to be an expensive option either. I can't imagine us not resigning. So, dude, I, seriously, yeah, I, uh, Jake Boss, one, ex, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's better than advertised. He's, he's the whole package. Yeah, Stephen B., yeah, Rizzo will walk. There's a team. There's a team option for 2025, but I doubt the Yankees are going to exercise it. Uh, he's. I, I'd say he's gone after the season. Yeah, FL Diver. I, uh, Burns does come with a QO, doesn't he? And I. Yeah, I doubt the Yankees sign anybody with a QO. I mean, they lose IFA money, draft picks. <laughs> no, I, I hear you, Sierra, and um. You know, maybe when when you uh, when we do a show together again, we, we could talk about it. We could we could dedicate a whole hour to Glaber Torres if you want. <laughs> when the Brewers are shopping Burns. Okay, I guess the the question is, does um do, do the Yankees make an offer for Corbin Burns? That that's the big question there, Ken. What do you all think? Yeah, I, I see your reasoning to moving him to first base because of his injuries in the outfield. I, that could be a possibility. You know, there's a lot of different possibilities. There's a lot of different scenarios. It's just, you know, who knows what the Yankees are going to do. I'm giving up. Yeah, I, I don't I don't see it either. Dev Finch. Yeah, the, moving him to shortstop was terrible. I I, I couldn't believe that. Hey, cold Italian pizza. One of my favorite YouTube names. What's going on, man? I was saying, yeah, you can't win them all, but at least they won the series. Now, yeah, so good facts, man. Uh, you know, they won the series. They couldn't sweep. Look, the Marlins, a team like the Marlins, they're going to do everything they can to um, to win. They're, right now, they're one of the worst teams in baseball. So 
you know, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to put, they're going to push hard. They're going to, they're going to play hard. Right. Some of these teams that are, that have losing records, it's like, they're, they're, they're still going to go out there and play. So, but they won the series. I'm not complaining. The Yankees are 10 and three. So there, there's nothing to be upset about. Two hours on Twitter space, man. Glaber hour. Let's go. All right. You want it? You're down. We could talk. Like I said, we could talk about Glaber. I like Glaber Torres. All right. I, I've said it. I've said it a million times. I love Glaber Torres, but I don't know. I'm not, I'm not seeing it. I, I'm going to, I'll be sad when he sign if he signs with another team, but you know, we'll see. We do go Torres. So you could sign Burns. True, 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 true. But they haven't made a QO to Torres yet, which is surprising, but maybe they do make one. Orioles might right resign with Burns. Yeah, they they are under new ownership, so I think this new ownership is going to look to spend money. So um, the Orioles, you know, they're they're a team to watch out for, right? They're they're they got a bunch of young talent. I mean, they just called up Jackson Holiday yesterday, so uh, which is exciting for 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 him, you know, being a young player. You know, I'm obviously I'm not an Orioles fan, but him as a player, I hope I hope you know things work out for him, you know. So I'll leave it at that. Burns can't have a qualifier because he was trading one. Ah, okay. Okay. See, Ken, this is why this is why I like Ken. Ken knows his stuff. Ken knows his stuff. All right. You know, Verdugo, yeah, yep, yep. Yeah, so where are you gonna where do you want to put judge? Well, he needs to be moved down in the lineup. Where do you want to put him? I mean, if you're going to put him anywhere, you put him third and bat wants, or excuse me, bat him, bat him second and put Juan Soto third, right? Yeah. So again, guys, uh, real quick, uh, if you haven't yet, smack that like button. If you are now tuning in, if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, share this out with anybody you know. And there's a little QR code right there that if if you want, you could uh, – it's a website that I set up. It's called Buy Me a Coffee. You could buy coffees. It just – if you want to, you know, put some money down, it just helps out the channel. Uh, no pressure. You don't have to. So I'll also post the link to that as well if you all want to uh, – do that so let me so that's the link right there too um yeah ju judge yeah so judge will be okay stanton yeah so uh john carlos stanton's been on uh for for these last uh what do you call it five games six games uh he's eight for 19 hitting he's hitting, hitting about 421 John Carlos Stanton's been on fire lately, so his bat's been heating up, and his batting average, I, I believe, is at about as is at around two fifty six, which I'm not complaining about. He's been he's been hitting he's been hitting well. He's been making uh, he's been making uh, contact with the ball, so he's been getting on base. He's been he's been on fire lately. So that's the John Carlos Stanton we need, right? That's the John Carlos Stanton we need. He started off the season rough. But uh, now he's he's just absolutely killing it. So you know I have no complaints about John Carlos Stanton. He's been he's been a bright spot as of late. Uh, you know Anthony Volpe he's been a bright spot as of late too. Uh, he's been absolutely just killing it. I'll bring up I'll bring up the stats here. Let me do that. Ali, good morning. What's going on? Hey, Rob. I haven't seen you in a while. What's up, man? How you feeling? New York Yankees shows a ton of heart. The most consistent bat. Yeah, I mean, that is one thing I will say about Glaber is that he has been consistent. He hardly get. He, he never gets hurt. He's always out there. He's always, uh, you know, just playing the game, whether he's playing bad or playing good. He's showing up. But uh, yeah, what do you guys think about John Carlos Stanton, though? Um, how do you all feel about him in these last, you know, four or five games? Let let me know. Yeah, I mean, Torres has to impress this season. I mean, right now he has, you know, he's been 
my dog. Ruff, ruff. <laughs> I got my Yankees clay chain on too, so I'm I'm uh I'm I'm rocking out today, you guys. Let me know what you all think. Uh, yeah, Stanton's been Stanton's been he he's been he's been killing it, guys. What do you, what do you guys what do you guys how do you guys feel about John Carlos Stanton? Do you guys think that this is just a, a um? I know we we've said that he's a streaky player, but are we seeing uh, the John Carlos Stanton that we all know? Is he going to continue trending in the right direction? How do we how do we feel? Yeah, two fifty six with an eight ninety four OPS. Yeah, one hundred percent, Sierra. Yeah, I knew he was hitting two. Yeah, it's skinny Stanton season for sure. Yeah, I mean Stanton's playing better than Judge as of right now, but Judge, Judge is going to wake up. I mean, Judge will wake up. I'm confident that Judge will wake up. He usually does play slow, so um, you know, let's not let's not let's not forget that he starts off the season slow, but he he does he does well. So he will play well. He will he will he'll, he'll come around. He'll come around. Gregory Wayne, what's going on, Gregory? But yeah, how do we feel about uh, John Carlo? Though I mean, are, do we feel that he's that he's back, or do you think will he'll go on another slump and go back to the John Carlo that we were seeing? And Ken says to all the Stanton haters, kick rocks. <laughs> Uncle Tats is saying Stanton took some time, but this could be him seeing teammates being patient has realized he can make the same adjustments. Yep. And he's been a lot more patient at the plate. Look, um, Stan's been killing it. Stan's been, yeah, tied for six home run. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Looks like his normal streaky self. He'll be up and down. Just have to set these hot streaks to balance things out. Yeah. Um, you know, he's been he's been getting the hits. He's been getting the home runs. I mean, he's been – he's again, he's been playing well. You know, I, I – I, have no complaints about John Carlo. The only criticism I I I made about John Carlo was this was that if he continued being on this slump, then you got to move him down in the lineup. You know, this, before the season even began, uh, folks were talking about DFAing John Carlo, benching him, bring up the you know when Dominguez comes back, put him in place of Dominguez. But you know, I'm just like, hey, let the season play out. My thing was, you know, if he was slumping the way he was, like he started out in the season, I was saying, let's move him down the lineup, right? Uh, but he's turned it around. He's turned it around. I mean, he's he's been he's been looking he's been looking great. What's up, Allie? Yeah, let's see what happens. I mean, like I said, these these last you know four or five days. I mean, he has he's been his batting average in the last four or five days has been four twenty one. So he's eight for nineteen. You know, it's encouraging to see that, you know, he's been stepping up. He's been stepping up. That's the guy that we wanted to step up. That's the guy that I've been wanting to step up. Many, many fans wanted to step up. Yeah, Rizzo, he's, you know, age catches up with all athletes, man. I hate to say it, Demon D. And the nice thing about it, he doesn't get to him. He never complains. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he does take accountability. Look, I'm all for players taking accountability, but if you're going to take accountability, also go out there and, and and show us, right? And he has been so far. If you stand healthy and we get 140 games out of him, he will hit 40 dingers. Yeah. And I'll take 140 games from John Carlos Stanton all day. I will take 140 games from him. But um, I do think that this uh, – this with him slimming down, I think it's benefited him greatly. Yeah, yeah, I was in favor of the pine for the record, Crow. And hey, <laughs> I think we should try it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that they'll put uh, Dominguez at first base. He's an outfielder. I, I think ultimately that's where he where he's going to play. He'll probably play left field though. He'll probably play left field, but um. Yeah, I, I do think that Stanton's been on fire. Uh, Volpe's been on fire. I know he had that error yesterday, but outside of that, Vol Volpe's been uh, phenomenal this season thus far. In these 13 games that he's played, um, he has been fantastic at, at, at the plate. So I have zero complaints about Anthony Volpe.
Um, he's a lot more patient at the plate. He's, you know, getting hit, getting those hits, stealing bases, you know, drawing walks. So he's been looking a lot, a lot better this year. You know, I, I remember last year, everybody was ready to write him off. Yeah, Jonathan, a lot of people are saying, are, are saying that, but I'll be honest. And, I, you know, and I've talked with Dane Huber about this. Uh, ben Rice is probably a trade piece. That's what I, I mean. I, I, I'd say he's a trade piece because the Yankees are loaded with catchers right now and they have a lot of options there. And I know we're talking about first base, but I really think that Ben Rice is probably going to be, he's probably going to be a trade piece. You know, why does everybody think 30s is so old? He's one of my favorite. I like Anthony Rizzo. Listen, Ali, uh, you know, as far as far as what I said earlier about his age, I'm just saying that age eventually it, it catches up with athletes. Uh, Rizzo is still good. You know, his, you know, he, his bat is, you know, so-so, right? But his his defense is always, is, um, is always solid. Yeah, there's once in a while he does make some mistakes, but you know it is what it is. So, Donnie, good morning to you. Salute, man. Volpe's going to be good for years to come. Yeah, I'm I'm expecting big things from Volpe. Lou's saying Rizzo's done. Yeah, yeah, Rumfield is the the guy that I'm thinking of. He he could he could be that guy. There, FL diver. Yeah, no, it's I, I like I like that as well. But um, yeah, so you know, like I said, Stanton's been on fire, Volpe's been on fire. Uh Judge, I know. So here's the thing about Judge. I know his batting average is not great. I know he hasn't really been getting hits. Um, he's been, you know, either striking out or 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 you know flying out, right? But here's the but the thing I will say about Judge as of late, he's been drawing a lot of walks. Which is which is good, because pitchers don't want to pitch to him. So, D Rod, what's up, D Rod? What's going on? How you doing, man? How you doing? How you feeling? But yeah, Judge will be fine. I agree. But Judge has been drawing a lot of walks lately, so that that's never a bad thing. Uh, if you're able to draw walks, that creates opportunities. So, what do you all think about that? I, I think I again, I I do think that uh, Judge his his bat will come around. His bat will come around. Uh, nosebleed section is back. What's up, man? How you doing? You know the one bat that the one bat that does need to bet, get better that needs to start hitting. Um, and Sierra's probably going to be upset with me, but Glaber Torres' bat needs to come around. Um, you know, he's been showing some signs, but he needs to he needs to get some hits. The other guy is uh, Jose Trevino, right? His batting average is, is at a .056. It's um, it's pretty – yeah, it's bad right now, but I'm hoping Trevino comes around. Wells is another guy, right? Wells is another guy that needs to come around too, Austin Wells. Um, he hasn't really been um, hitting too well. So, and then you know Verdugo. Although Verdugo hit that hit that one solo shot against the Marlins, and that you know he was part of the reason why the team won. So, which is nice to see. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm looking you know trimmed and proper uh, for for once in my life. I, maybe I, I need to stick with this more often and look a little more professional for the for the camera. I don't know. You tell me, bro. <laughs> Yeah, both catchers need to pick it up because, man, I hate to say it, I, I and I like Trevino, but I'm I'm every time he comes up to bat, it, it's one of those things where I'm just like, I don't know if you're gonna get a hit. Like, I'm not rooting for him to do bad, obviously, but I want him to, I want him, I want him to start playing well. But you know, unfortunately, he hasn't. I don't know if something's bothering him, something is off. I'm not sure. Yeah, he's yeah. Yeah, exactly. Helps me roll better. Could be. Yeah, I, I, I've been saying I liked. Uh, 
Yeah, real quick, I want to say this. Yeah, I like Torres at the five, five and seven spot in the lineup. Uh, give him a week to adjust. I, I like him better down in those spots anyway. So, yeah, I know, man. He just missed a home run. Yeah, I and that's the that's the thing, Ken. Right? Like he's not a home run guy, like you said, but he's more of a doubles machine. I want. I, I hey, I'll take doubles all day. You know that that's. That's another reason why I want him, why I would want him at the leadoff spot. But, you know, I don't, I don't know that the Yankees are going to move him there. Yeah, Yanks knew that going in. Yeah, they got him for his de def defense. So, guys, uh, real quick, I'm going to post a link to the open panel. So, anybody who wants to come on and chat, let me know. Uh, I'll invite you all up one at a time. I'll let you all give your take. And then uh, I'll invite the next person up. All right. So let me put that in right now. And anybody who wants to come up, you're welcome to. Yeah, there's the. Yeah, there's the there's the link for anybody who wants to come up. But the other thing I wanted to bring up too was uh, DJ Lemayhu. I don't know if you guys saw, but he was taking batting practice yesterday, which was great to see, and he's going to be traveling with the team. So DJ LeMahieu is uh, slowly coming back, or he's slowly making his comeback. He's making his progress. Um, you know, it'll be great to have him in the lineup. And um, you know, I know I know some people are not really a fan of DJ, that, but I, I like him personally. So um, I'm going to. I got a couple of people waiting backstage, so I'm going to invite you all up one at a time. You all give your take, and then I'm going to drop you off. Right. So I got Jonathan and Donnie Clark in the back. So I, I'm going to bring up Jonathan first. So, Jonathan, let me know you're ready. Give me a thumbs up. Cool. <laughs> All right. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Uh, here we go. Let me change the screen here. Jonathan, good morning, man. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Cool. Cool. So. We talk. I don't know. I don't know how much of the conversation you caught. I, I, I got. I was here from the start. Okay, you were here from the start. Cool. So, what's your take, man? As far as uh, Gleyber Torres, I, I, I don't think he will uh, return, and I don't think the. I think he will get a QO. Mm -hmm. I don't think the Yankees should get him for the sole, basically for the sole purpose of he. The Yankees will be fully focused on re-signing Soto, and Soto will want a minimum of six hundred million. The Yankees are not going to give spend six hundred million dollars on a player and another hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars on another player. You need to you need to build around Judge and Soto once you re-sign Soto, and you need another a hundred. A million plus that you will have to give to to Torres to sign other pieces. So I don't think he get. I don't think they have money or room for Soto. Plus, you have guys coming up in the system, which Dane Huber talked about, that could possibly replace him and maybe replace him with better defense. That's the one thing we're not talking about when we talk to so about Torres. His defense is not is not gold glove defense. And think about this way. If you re-sign Soto, you're getting Soto's bat, which is better than Torres. Yeah, listen, I you know, I've been saying it from the start, um, and I've been saying it for a while. I, I don't think the Yankees bring back Glaber Torres, and I like Glaber Torres. I, I I do like Glaber Torres. I'm a I'm a Glaber Torres fan. But let me finish with this: they have other guys in the minor league system 
I mean, they have they have Yorbit Vivas and they have they, there's you know Lombard, they have Arias. There, there's a there's a there's a bunch of players. Yeah. You know, so the, um, one other thing I can add to that. Mm -hmm. Giving Glibertour the QO and having him sign for another team adds both a draft picks for next year and more money. I, I believe they get more money in the international free agent sinus pool. So they all also connected to a lot of high players in next year's international signing pool. So think about this way. You you might lose Gleyber Torres, but you might sign someone who has this potential to be better than Gleyber Torres and can help you well into the future, not over the next five or six years. Yeah. No, you're, you're, you're right. You're right. Look, like, like I said, I, I think I like Labor Torres. I just don't, I don't, I don't see him being brought back. You know, I, I think a lot of us can uh, agree with that. But uh, how do you feel about uh, Giancarlo Stanton, how he's been playing? Do you think that he's going to continue trending this way or do you think he'll get cold again? Well, I think he needs to just continue what he's doing and be, have good plate discipline. If he can, stop swinging, expanding his strike zone mm -hmm. and he can be focused then he should i think he can continue i i i wouldn't be surprised if he ends the season with a, a batting average around 270 with 35 home runs if he does that that would be a great season yep i i I mean, he's been like I said. He over the last like five, what is it, four or five days? You know, he's got a, he's got, he, he has a four twenty. He's been his batting average is four twenty one. Yeah, you're right not, now that's not gonna, that's not going to continue. Well, it's not going to continue, but it's encouraging though. He's getting his yeah. hits. He's not just depending on the home run ball. You know, he's been looking a lot better at the plate where he where he was you know slumping. So I'm. I, it's encouraging to see uh, that. Right? There's one. There's one. Thing that could be contributing to that. He, for the first time in his Yankee career, he has Judge and Soto surrounding him. So he mm -hmm. doesn't have to put the pressure in his head to be the guy. He doesn't have to be the guy to get the clutch hit, to hit the home run. And that could, that in, in effect, has a more calming mindset when he's at the plate. Yeah. You know. I'm just glad right now with John Carlo. I'm just ha happy to see that he's not just hitting home run balls. He's not just thinking home run. He's getting hits. Like I said, I, I've been happy with the way he's been playing. Uh, I, I hope this. Uh, I hope this trend continues in the right direction. Uh, what players do you think has been? You know, we're, we're kind of talking about studs and duds, and John Carlo has been a stud. Who's a dud? Like who's been who's been playing bad and needs to. Uh, Trevino, Trevino, yeah, Trevino, yeah, Trevino. Unfortunately, I and I like Trevino, but yeah, he has not been playing well. Uh, he's uh, just he, not needs, he needs to, uh, he needs to pick it up. And not only his, uh, I think he's made some defensive errors that he usually doesn't make as well. Mm -hmm. So it's both his offensive and his defenses. I got you, but uh, I if. I think uh, once May, I, I think this is this also could be just be part of a slow start for most players. Once the weather gets warmer and it doesn't rain, there's no rain. If there's no rain delays, everybody should be clicking. And also, I think uh, having coal just in the in the around i know he's around now but he's not playing once you play behind cole it's probably also a different mindset just to see him on the mound so i wouldn't be surprised if once cole gets back pitching well when he does i wouldn't be surprised if everybody else also kicks it up a notch facts 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 so what do you think about uh the this whole thing with dj he's been taking batting practice he's going to be traveling with the team uh you I'm, I'm i would assume that the yankees are probably going to plug him in right away when he when he's officially well, back. I, 
I would I would think when once he once he feels the one hundred percent, he's going to be in the lineup. I, yeah. I'm ho- I'm hoping he can he can come back and be that uh, three three hundred hitter that he he was a couple of years ago before his injury and him getting back in the lineup consistently can also help the guys around him, help mm-hmm. the young guys, help Stanton, help Judge probably. Because uh, one thing about Judge is. He, he could be having also in being getting in own in his own head that he last year he was off to a start where he could have easily broken the sixty two home runs and then he got hurt because of a dumb wall <laughs> and, uh, and it's possible his ankle or his foot his foot could still be bothering him and nobody's selling him no nobody has thought about that so you never know. I got you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to drop you off here in just a moment. Um, I got a few other folks waiting. So any final thoughts? Well, right, right now, the Yankees, in my opinion, just need to be more focused, have to make the picture work. Because what, what I've been seeing and reading about the game uh, against the Marlins, along with the bad umpiring call, I think they just have to work the pitcher, get the pitcher out in the fourth or fifth inning and get to the bullpen. And, uh, you know, be be more selective in their pitches and their swings, not just uh, go for the jug, not go for the home run all the time. Yankees do not need to rely on the home run. They need to rely on just getting on base and make the other, the next guy get the RBI. That's all they should think about. Mm-hmm. And the home run is just an added bonus. That that's the way that's the way I would think about it if I was the manager. Okay. All right. No, I, that's a solid take, man. That that's fine. Um. All right, man. So, Jonathan, as always, appreciate you coming on. Uh, it's you. always a pleasure. So, uh, folks in the, that are waiting backstage, appreciate you guys' patience. So, I'm gonna go in this order. I'm gonna bring up Donnie Clark, then Ken. Then D Rod. So I'm going to drop you off here, Jonathan. So uh, we'll see you soon, bro. Thanks for coming on. Uh, Donnie. How's it going, everyone? Salute, sir. How are you doing? Salute to you. What's going um, on? I'm feeling like you too, Evan FE. I got to start trimming up again because it's getting a little long, you know? <laughs> well, yeah, no, I, f- I feel you. So everything that I, that we talked about this morning, where, wherever you want to start, man. Um, Taurus, I know Sierra's not going to like what we were talking about earlier. You saying too? I know I understand that, but if he wants that big payday, Taurus has to be a glaver of old. Who's going to give him that big contract? Mm-hmm. That's my, that's my thing on Taurus. With Judge, we know what's going to happen. Judge is going to be fine, and Judge even said himself he's going to deal with that toll for the rest of his career. You know what I mean? I know Jonathan touched on it a little bit, and Judge said the same thing. He's going to have to deal with that toll forever. Yeah, he might have to go to the black market and get a new toll. <laughs> Man, Dodgers spent all that money on FE, but they can't fix the wall. Yeah, it, it it well, it is what it is. I mean, we could keep talking about that wall and talk about his foot, but you know, the past is the past. So you know, we gotta we gotta you know we gotta move on from that. But yeah, Torres not coming back is probably you know. So you're in agreement with that? He's probably he's probably not gonna be back. Yeah, we got Vivas and stuff coming up. We got all these younger guys can coming up too. So, mm-hmm. what do you think about Giancarlo Stanton? How he's been playing? Uh, Stan's playing with kind of like a chip on the shoulder though, isn't he? He's trying to prove everybody wrong. Like, Hey, don't count me out yet. I'm not done yet. I'm going to give it whatever I have. And I, he did give hundred percent this off season too. Like judge was saying, he started working out in November and stuff. And you know, I'm a big G fan too. And I'm, I'm down on him sometimes as well, but I mean, the guy can't hit home run every night. Yeah. Look, I'm, I'm not, I don't want guys hitting home runs all the time. I mean, look, I like home runs. I, we all like home runs, but you know, get hits, get on base, create opportunities. Right. You know, I know John Carlo is a home run guy, and he's he's you know clearly he's got the he's got the build, he's got the he's got the he's he's built for it, he's built to hit home runs. But if he gets on base, if he draws walks, I'm not going to complain about that. Right, and that's all. Sorry, go. I was just going to say real quick. No, you're good, and I'll let you have your take. The problem with last year was that every player on this team was trying to hit for a home run ball, and it was just like that's not really the right way to go about it. Um. But these guys this year, they're they're getting hits, they're drawing walks, um, they're creating those opportunities. 
So, you know, this is this is a much different lineup. Even with some of the guys that are slumping at the moment, uh, these guys are still playing well. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I, and I would say the same thing with um, Doogie. I mean, people are like, well, he hasn't hit any home runs and stuff like that. But look at his defense. He saves runs. Doogie saves runs. He's always been that way, even playing in Boston. He's a run saver. He wasn't always, like, smashing 30 home runs all the time. Like you said, as mm -hmm. long as he gets doubles and stuff, gets on base, you know, does his job, then what can you expect from him out, you know? Yeah, 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 no doubt. Um, What do you think – about some, you know, who who on this team needs to improve? As of right now, mm -hmm. yeah. um, Torres. Obviously, we talked about Torres has to step up. Um, Rizzo, Rizzo's got to step up too because Rice is weighed in. And there's, you know, what I mean, Jones could be coming up soon, and Jones could play first base too. So I think my two really are just Rizzo, yeah, I mean, and uh, Torres right now. Yeah, I, I mean the Tor yeah Torres's bat needs to come around. Uh, he hasn't. He. And, I mean, at least he's making contact with the with the bat, which is great. But um, his bat needs to come around. Judge needs to come around, and he will. I'm confident that Judge will. The only po the positive I will say about Judge, even though he's not hitting, he's drawing walks, which is and that's good. Yeah, and that's, that's good. always good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I've always been. I've. I, you know, something that my brother always said, and I. You know, I don't want to say he came up with it, but uh, you know, a walk is just as good as a hit. That's and, and 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 it's facts. So I I will you know I'll, I'll take walks all day. I will take walks all day. But judge judge's bat needs to come around. Ho hopefully, Trevino. He's not. He hasn't been playing well. But Austin Wells' bat has not been great either. There's been a couple of times where he's he's looked good, but you know his bat needs to come around as well. Uh, you know we'll, we'll you know we'll we'll see what happens. So, um. What do you think about TJ? Oh, sorry. Um, did Soto uh, lead yeah. the league last year? Walks as well. Since we're talking about walks, uh, I want to say he did. I'm not. I'm not sure. I can let me. I could research I think, that. But. Yeah, I think he. I think he did. Somebody was talking to me about it too. We were talking, had a discussion. I'm saying, does, does Soto have the record for the walks? It wouldn't surprise me because he 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 walks a lot, and that's good. Like you said, walks are good. Like you're saying, yeah. you were talking about it before. Walks are good. You take walks. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, he had the most walks in 2023. So that's good for us. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. Uh, hey, I'm not. Yeah, so Soto doesn't have to hit bombs. After, I, I agree. I want Soto to have MVP. I've been saying that all, uh, since the season started. But he doesn't mm -hmm. have to hit, like, 62 like Judge did, you know what I mean, in order to have a good season. Yeah, listen, I, I, I don't care if you hit, you know, 30 home runs, 60 home runs, 20 home runs. I mean, the, the most important thing is, is winning games. That's the most important thing. But – you know, again, I'm not going to complain about home runs, but we they got to get the hits, they got to get the they got to get the runs, they got to get people on base, right? So that's that's what's important. And this record NFE this year is totally different. What's up, Rich? What's up, Richie? Sir? Um, sorry, um, the, this team good. is totally different than last year's team, right? Can everybody agree on that? Oh, this team is much different than it was last year. I and I knew that coming in. Last year, I didn't really have a whole lot of confidence. I had I was I was uh, cautiously confident. This year, I'm I'm a hundred. I'm I was definitely way more confident. So you know, you, I, sorry, sorry, Nafi. No, I, I no, no, you're good. So I'm I'm more confident with this team than I was uh, last year. And um, I mean, I'm sure you're in agreement with that. I'm sure most fans are in agreement with that. And without Judge even getting hurt last season, mm -hmm. I think this team is still better, even when he was healthy, like compared to last year. You know what I mean, yeah. Well, they're better. Look, Judge is on a slump. They're still playing well. They're without Cole. They're still playing well. I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to complain about a ten and three record. No, me either. Okay. No. So, what do you think? Let me. Let's. And then, last thing we'll talk okay. about real quick. What's. What do you think about DJ Lemayhu? He was taking, um, some. He was taking batting practice. Um, DJ. Um, could be back soon. Then, if he's taking practice, right? If he's taking batting practice, he could be coming yeah. back. And we'll see if we yeah. get the DJ of old, right? Uh, he's. A little, he's up there in age. I think he's like thirty six. So, um, you know, yeah, he's getting up there in age. We'll we'll see what happens. Um, OJ Simpson just died. Is that for real, Jonathan? And D Rod with the with the jokes. Will the casket fit? Oh my god! <laughs> Cold hearted. Um, but like like I said, uh, I, DJ's taking batting practice. He's gonna be traveling with the team. So. 
um, you know, it's encouraging to see. I know the Yankees are going to pl- plug him in once he's, you know, officially healthy and if he, he's officially back. Dead at 76. Wow. Okay. Wow. Was, okay. Yeah. Do, you, do you see NFE as uh, DJ ever when he retires become a hit instructor for us? I can see that. Dad, I don't know. I, Dad, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not really sure. Well, I, I don't know. I yeah. he could be. He could be. He could be. He could be a hitting. He could be a hitting coach. Maybe I, I don't know about major league level. I could see him maybe at the minor league level. Starting first. out first, getting his yeah. We'll, we'll, you know, uh, we'll see though. Okay. But um, final thoughts, man. Before I let you go, because I got final two, thoughts. Got Let's go, Yanks. Slew everybody in the chat and mm-hmm. slew NFE and keep doing what you're doing, sir. You're doing a great job as always. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for always being in the chats, man. Uh, showing your support. I greatly appreciate it. Um, I'm going to drop you down. And then I got Ken and D-Rod in the back. So I'm going to bring up Ken first. So I'll see you later, bro. Take care, everyone. All right. Uh, Ken, let me know you're ready. Give me a thumbs up, please. Oh, you good? Yep. Okay, cool. Good morning, sir. How are you? Salute. Salute to you, brother. How are you going? I'm doing pretty good, man. Doing pretty good. Um, how are you feeling about the Yankees? Anything that we discussed in the chat? How, wherever you want to start, man. There is nothing to be dissatisfied with the Yankees. Thus mm-hmm. far, their starting pitching is doing much better than anticipated without Garrett Cole. Mm-hmm. Uh, the bullpen has done, for the most part, held their own and done well. Uh, glad to see the two great starts from uh, Cortez and Rodon keeping the uh, innings down for the bullpen. Mm-hmm. Uh, bats, I mean, you hit or you don't hit. I mean, yeah. Very impressed with Stanton. Uh, he has four dingers right now, but he should have five because he, he should have got one two days ago. <laughs> yes. They got off the fence, but uh, his hard hit rate is roughly 93 miles an hour for his at-bats, which is a very encouraging sign. Uh, if I was Boone, I'd, I'd think about uh, possibly flipping Stanton or uh, – that's Stanton, uh, Soto and, uh, and judge judge seems to be eating a lot of walks and mm-hmm. the way that, uh, Soto and Stanton are hitting, they need, they need table setters. So you need <laughs> runners on, on the bases ahead of them because they're driving the damn runs in. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, um, what do you think of Volpe leading off yesterday? Uh, you know, some fans were in favor of it. Some fans thought it was too soon. I personally thought it was too soon. I think they should just left him where he was, but I want to get your take on that. Well, I mean, three months from now, if you stick him in the lead, he, he's still going to be experiencing experiencing the position, hitting position the first time. So get his, get his beak wet. I mean, Glaber was in this uh, Marlins series and the leadoff spot was what, for, 0 for 11? So... Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Why? I guess get you know because I mean eventually. Yeah, we talked about it that he is going to be a leadoff guy at some point, right? We we did talk about that. So I guess you know you need to start him somewhere. You know he needs to start somewhere. I know they tried that last year with him. It didn't exactly work out, but we got to keep in mind it was his rookie season and uh, it was a much different team. So. I think this year, though, I, I mean, you couldn't make the case that putting him at leadoff. Again, I thought it was too soon. You know, I wasn't necessarily upset or mad that they put him at the leadoff spot yesterday. I don't know if that was Boone's decision or whether it was the analytics department. I'm, you know, I'm not 100% on that. But, you know, at some point, yeah, he is going to be a leadoff guy. I, that's where he belongs. Uh, but I feel like at the mo- at this very moment, I think they should just kept him where he was, and maybe you got to put. I I, th- I think about maybe putting Verdugo there because you put in the comments earlier that uh you know he, he is a doubles machine. My only issue with Verdugo in the leadoff spot, that dude likes to swing at first pitches like no tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And uh, the way that our lineup has been, we're averaging each batter for the team 
is averaging about 4.6 pitches a uh, an at bat. That chews up their st anybody starting rotation like no tomorrow. So we get to their pen where they're more susceptible. So you know, it's six one way, half a dozen another. Yep. No, you're right. You're right. Um, any bats that you want to see improve that that hasn't been doing well, but that they need to step up. Well, I mean, you could look at Judge. I don't think Judge is doing badly. His batting average isn't good, but his on base percentage is pretty good, and he is taking a lot of uh, a lot of walks. Mm -hmm. So that, that's why I mentioned earlier possibly the the flip between him and Soto. Uh, from the catching p position, Wells and uh, Trevini are hitting hideously, but with with the uh, with the offense that we have, we could afford a dead spot in the lineup. It's just who you think is a better catcher uh, sitting behind the dish. I still think that Wells has a lot to learn about being a major league catcher, and could could deal, uh, you know, sitting behind Trevino and learning. The, the nuances of the uh, of the position. Yeah, I mean, well, Wells is still young. There, there, there was just you know, I I do agree with you. Wells is still young. There's been a lot of um, there's been a lot of talk about him. I remember hearing his name a lot from you know some of the guys that you know that I talked to content creators that focus a lot on prospects, and uh, they we're talking very highly of Austin Wells and it, it was, it's nice to hear that, right? Because you, you know, the Yankees were in desperate need of better, better players. So I, I, I do think that Wells will come around, but he, like you said, he still has a lot to learn. There's no, no doubt about that. But what I, what I liked was that a lot of, there was a lot of players that spoke very highly of him. You know, Carlos Radon said how much he loved pitching to him. He loved working with him. So there was a good, there was a good, uh, chemistry there between um you know him and him and wells but wells like you said yeah i i agree he's still has a lot to learn and you know we'll you know hopefully he comes around hopefully his back comes around he gets better defensively um i i, I have i have high hopes for him i do too and i think eventually he will be the uh be the number one catcher okay just don't yeah. think he's ready for it right now understood understood um yeah, right now the I think the catcher position is pretty tough because you know Trevino is great defensively. Although I know his you know there's been a couple of times where he didn't he missed the ball and that's not solely on him, but his bat hasn't been great. You know his batting average right now is it's it's not even it's not even at a hundred right now. I mean we're we're looking at point point zero five six. <laughs> so you know his bat definitely needs to come around. But uh, even at even at the pitiful rate that his batting average is right now, mm -hmm. last night he uh, did not strike out. He had decent contact on on three at, during three at bats. Mm -hmm. So he may be about to turn the corner. I mean, we're talking two weeks into the season. Everybody's yeah. not firing on the same on the on uh, the same cylinder yet, but we'll get there. A lot to be yeah. optimistic about the Yankees this year. Oh, I'm listen. I'm I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic. I'm just pointing out just minor things that need to be fixed. I'm I'm you know they're ten and three. So I remember you know we we all saw you know last week when everybody was freaking out or what was it? No, it was like a couple of weeks ago that everybody was freaking out about oh my god this team. And I'm like what? It's only one loss. Let's chill. <laughs> so you know they're they're ten and three. I have no complaints about ten and three. They're in first place in the division. Uh, they're off to a hot start. That's and that's with you know Aaron Judge struggling. They're missing Garrett Cole, so you know this team's in pretty good shape. Um, and then what do you what do you think about DJ? He's been taking he's been uh, at batting practice with the team. He's going to be traveling with the team, so he should be making a comeback here pretty soon. I wanted to get your thoughts on DJ. Well, I mean DJ. The Yankees have fifteen million invested for him for this season, and mm -hmm. he's not going to sit. No uh, way. I agree. The the problem is 
who do you take out of the lineup? Because Cabrera had been a decent hitter. Can't hit lefties worth a shit, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Birdie, Birdie is a is a decent contact hitter. He can do things that other players I've seen, like dropping bunts and stuff like that, advancing runners. He's a smart ball player, and uh, he makes the most of his skill set that he can. But he's not going to start over DJ. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, my, yeah. He's my worry good. with DJ. My worry with DJ is is he has been injured the last three seasons a lot. Yeah, his, his his foot. Yeah, that foot's been bad luck for him, and uh, you know, and I know he was wasn't he at one point having some issues with his hip as well. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, as I said earlier, I mean, eventually age catches up with the athletes. You know, even with the best of them. So, and it, it's just part of it's just it is what it is. You know, you could be the best or the worst player. Uh, age catches up, injuries catch up. I mean, you know. I'm- I mean, you look at A-Rod. A-Rod, when his hip gave out and he had to have surgery, he ended up having two surgeries. He became His dynamic as a hitter became completely different. Mm-hmm. And he was a much worse version of himself. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're – like I said, you know your stuff, Ken. You've been, you've been following the game. You've been following this team for a very long time. Uh, well, I mean, I, I'll tell you. The, the best Yankee I ever seen play in an actual game was Mickey Mantle, if that tells you how old I am. <laughs> you, st- you you look great, man. You look great. I don't care how old you are. <laughs> you look great. Um, last, night, last night I was in bowling leagues, and I was listening to the Yankee game while I was bowling, and I was so fucking agi- or so agitated <laughs> that I, I completely crapped up my league bowling last night. We got our butts kicked. Ah. Uh... Can't let those emotions the, get to you, man. I was on the edge <laughs> of my seat just waiting for us to come through, and it's like, oh, God, not again. <laughs> I got you, man. I got you. But uh, before I let you go, because I got one other person waiting in the back, um, any final thoughts? Well, personally, I think we have a great team this year. Mm-hmm. The chemistry is, is looking real good. Uh, Soto and Verdugo have brought – attitude back to the Yankees. I mean, you see it in other players like uh, uh, Stanton when he's blasted some of his dingers, has done mm-hmm. the bat flip and stared down the pitcher and whatnot, daring him to throw him another damn fastball. Uh, I'll tell you what, last night, Booney impressed me of all people. Oh, Dugo, really? was, getting those, Dugo was getting those crap strike calls and uh, he was about to lose containment on the umpire. And Boone went out there and ended up getting chunked, but he was he was giving it to him, letting him know about the crappy strike zone that affected us last night. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt, man. So, you, so even Boone's got the got the dog attitude. He does. Nah, Boone. Boone is yeah. He's a different. He's a different type of manager this year, and I, I hope it continues that way. So. He got he got kicked out of the game or he got thrown out of the game yesterday, which I mean <laughs> I was waiting for it. I was like, okay, any day now, like I'm waiting. So um, well yeah, Ken, always, sir, thank you for coming on, man. Thank you for your solid takes. Guys, like Ken knows his he knows baseball, he knows the Yankees. This guy's always dropping comments on my videos. I, and I always look forward to reading your comments. I mean, you you always bring a different insight to things, and I always appreciate that. So th- thank you, sir. Thank you. I appreciate your uh, your comments. And remember, the older you get, things get tempered with age. So, <laughs> yes, sir. I will keep that in mind. Thank you so much, sir. And um, we'll we'll see you next time. All right. Appreciate All right, it. Sir. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'm gonna actually. I got Jason backstage. I got to bring up my man, Jason. He's one of my. He's one of the fellow content creators. My fellow martial artists. How are you, sir? D Rod, you good to go? D Rod. How you doing, man? Good, good, bro. I got D Rod coming up. They let you out of the closet, D Rod. <laughs> oh shit, we're here together. Oh wow. <laughs> hey, <laughs> what's up, Jason? Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning. What what time is it over there? What time is it here? Eleven o'clock Eastern. All right, we're, we're same time here. 
it's Florida. It's funny. It was sunny five minutes ago, and now it's out of dark. I don't know if it's how the light is here, but uh, I want to say one thing real quick. You got to check out this. I love this hat. Look at that freaking hat. Rail Riders, bro. There you go. That is a, it's an old man with pinstripe diapers and a cigar. I mean, that's going to be me in six years. <laughs> totally. I love this hat. I was so excited to buy it. I didn't realize it's a youth style hat. It's tiny. I could barely put it on my head. It's for kids. And I bought it because I was so excited to buy the damn thing. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome but um Don't figure that i want to get uh l- let me start with uh I-, I like your out of the closet thing <laughs> <laughs> um i want to get uh i want to get comments from d-rod and jason uh d-rod you were in there for most of the chat like anywhere you want to start bro uh, I mean, there's, a, there's a couple of things that you could start with i mean trevino's defense is is uh is a mystery because it's it, you know that's what he's known for he was never a good bat and now he's got now his defense is a little you know you know uh, i guess suspect or whatever it is but what i don't understand is why do catchers catch on one knee with runners on base you know you, you, you can't you know there's balls all over the place if there's no one on base you can stand any which way you want you can stand on your head if you want if there's no one on base you know tony pena was great at it you know for i'm sure ken will probably know this you know he used to do that all the time he used to be like a like a, like on on a Cirque du Soleil behind the plate and um, and you know but when when there's runners on base especially on third base you want to be able to catch the ball because the pitcher you don't know where the ball is going to go the, it can hit it can hit the dirt it can go wherever you, you want to be able to to just be tradi- in the traditional crouch and be able to block the ball so that the runner the runners don't advance so I don't know why that's you know it's a philosophy now you know and that's I don't know why they do that but you know uh, Volpe is another thing too that I uh, you know he's doing great. Uh, I, my only thing with him is the opposite of, of Trevino is that his offense is fantastic. His defense, everyone, he, you know, he works hard. He just doesn't seem to be a natural for shortstop like Peraza is. And uh, apparently you know, Arias is also a, apparently a, a natural shortstop. You know, he seems like to work hard. Like his, his whole thing of playing a good shortstop is just working hard, which is great. But I don't think his arm is strong enough in the long term for shortstop. And you know, I think Pete somewhere, you know, I think some uh, content creators mentioned that. And I, said, and I started looking into it and I said, you know, his footwork is a little iffy and his arm, he's, he's got second base written all over him. He reminds me of Chuck Knobloch back in Minnesota and even with the Yankees a little bit. Short guy, fast, pop 50 home runs, steals 30, 40 bases. And that's, that's, that's he'd be great at that. And, and Knobloch was great at that in his role with the Yankees and that he was part of the reason why they were successful. And that's my take. Okay, no, I, that's a, that's a solid take, bro. I, I I appreciate the take, Jason. Your thoughts? Uh, to the same point, to Dira's point, I, and and I, this is something we've said for probably about a year or so too. That um, <clears throat> he'll probably be why better off at second base because of the way he profiles and the way he moves his body laterally. So, and Roderick Arias is is rated higher than Oswald Peraza defensively. So I do think he's the shortstop of the future. And you have a guy like George Lombard who could potentially be the third baseman of the future, unless they go after that guy like Murakami or something like that. Um, which makes it more sense that Volpe could be the logical replacement to Glaber Torres at second base. You can even move Yorbit Vivas to third base too. So there's a lot of options, but uh his bat's definitely ahead of his glove, even though he won, you know, his he won a Gold Glove last year, mm-hmm. and that's one of the things that we were looking for, right? Imp- improvements in his offense, and he's making those steps, uh, and, and it's sometimes it looks like he's taking steps backward with his glove. So, and it's I wouldn't say it's necessarily with his glove. I think it's with his throwing, and not his glove. So, um, but still defensively, and again, you know, Rizzo's been unable to scoop a couple of these throws out. So I, you know, we'll. Improvement there defensively help, yeah. But I think you know his bread and butter is probably going to be not only the way he plays, but the way he carries his bat. So, mm-hmm. uh, but I do think to Dwight's point, he profiles better at second base. Yeah, we've been saying it for about a year. Yeah, something like that. And it's it's you know, and it's it's it, we'll see if they do that at some point too, because he did win a Gold Glove at shortstop. I don't you know got to give him that. Um, but the fact is, Roderick Arias right now, and Oswald Peraza, we thought, would be the logical fit at shortstop, right? Because he's the way he rates defensively, but he can't stay healthy. 
and unfortunately, and I mean, uh, Roderick Arias is rated higher than him defensively, so it makes sense to have Rod- Roderick Arias or try to get him at shortstop and move Volpe to second. That's probably what are going to be the defensively the strongest in the infield. Yeah, and you know, Jason, I wonder. I'm, I'm glad you brought up the whole Volpe potentially moving to second and bring and you bring Arias up because a lot of there, there's been some people that are just like, you know, why are we writing off Volpe? We're not, it's, I don't think it's writing him off. It's just he would be playing better. He would be a better second baseman, and you put move him over to second base. He's easily at the at one of the top players at second base. Would you? I mean, would you agree with that? Yeah, and it's a way of maximizing his skill set. Yeah, by getting somebody better at shortstop, so mm-hmm. and the move is making in the infield defense better. So and again, that is a net positive. It's a net gain for the Yankees, and that that's the way I would encourage folks to look at it that way. So, yeah, Harry's not ready yet, so it's going to take a little bit of time, but that's okay. And they have guys like Beavis and other guys that can fill these holes until then. So no doubt. Um, but if, I do think Volpe is best suited at second base with a guy like Arias best suited for shortstop. And that middle infield combo, um, that that duet or that duo would, you know, is probably gonna be the best combo for the Yankees. Yeah, can you imagine that in an infield though with uh you know with Arias, uh Lombard and Volpe? Like that would be a solid infield. I, I like envisioned that because I was talking with Dane Huber a little bit last night. And, um, you know, because I was going over options that the Yankees have and what they could do with that infield. Uh-huh. And he he said, you know, he said the same thing that he envisions those three playing together. And I will I would love to see that, you know, um, young dynamic infield. Oh, my God. And you want that for your infield. You want a young dynamic infield. And like yeah. at that point, what if they replace Anthony Rizzo with Spencer Jones? Hmm. Yeah, have all star studded infield all together. Yeah, defensively in the infield, Jones obviously, but he's not here for his defense, here for his bat. Mm -hmm. And if the way to get him in the lineup is to move him to first base, it has to be considered. You Mm -hmm. want Mingus in the outfield, this allows you to put Spencer Jones in the infield, and you can have all these guys at the in the lineup. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I agree. I wanted to get your take on Volpe leading off last night. Did you agree with that or? I, I don't I want to get your thoughts on that too in a moment as well. I have a feeling the, the they're trying to attempt to jumpstart Torres' his bat and moving him to a more natural spot, whereas middle or middle of the, of the lineup is a more natural fit for him. I mean, all the fans have been asking for Volpe to be lead off anyway, so I don't know why people are surprised. But it's going to take more than one game to see if this transition makes sense. You know, you're going to have to play. Volpe lead off several games and Torres lead off. I mean, middle middle lineup several games in order to see whether it's going to work. But at the end of the day, you know, he needed to jumpstart his bat. Torres. Yeah, I, so. yeah, I think it was just because I think people were. I don't know. Some folks were like, "Why? Why are we moving Volpe to lead off? Because it's it was like too soon." You know, and I, it was just one of those things of like, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, eventually, like he was gonna. I eventually he's gonna be at that leadoff spot. I mean, you got to start him somewhere, I guess. But and he's been hitting well as of late. Yeah, but it you was know. broken. Uh, uh, Torres was the broken part, not not Volpe. That's okay. the thing. Like, right. So to, to to Jason's point is that Torres wasn't doing well. That's not he's not he's not a leadoff guy. Maybe he puts too much pressure on himself because it's leadoff and all that stuff. And you know, and the thing is that with leadoff and, and batting order, that really just goes the first time around. After that, and you know, after the first after the third inning, it really doesn't matter. You know, I mean, so, but, you know, that's, maybe it's, you know, just more pressure on, on the person. But uh, what I wanted to say was, was uh, on Volpe, why was his swing not this way last year? You know, different was it Lawson? Coach. Two different Yeah, but it's, I was thinking it's Lawson. What do you think? You know, was it Casey? The K- I, mean, I mean, Casey, when Casey came in, he was still, Volpe was still swinging the same way. Well, Lawson, so, you know, Lawson taught Volpe. Right. If I'm not mistaken, they've been I mean, that was his hitting coach. Yeah. But I mean, it was clear that this approach that he had with Volpe, which just wasn't working. Well, well, not just with Volpe, with any of the uh, the the bats, it wasn't working. Sean Casey came in. I mean, it it was, you know, the thing is, it was a it was it was a late season move. So, you know, you know, telling a guy like Volpe, who's a rookie to make adjustments 
It's yeah. a little hard to do. You know, some of the veteran guys can make those adjustments. And he had a little more time to spend with James Rosen. So I, you know, I wanted to get your guys' take on that. And to your point, too, NFE. Yeah. You know, last year, Judge was out 60 games. Stanton was out 60 games. And yeah. That, yeah. So right. Anthony Volpe was trying to do way too much, and he wasn't ready for it. Now mm-hmm. we have the lineup that allows him to develop naturally. He doesn't have to do that now. So it doesn't really matter where he bats. He can just develop on his own. And we've got guys like Juan Soto and Alex Verdugo and, and Grisham and all these other guys that make it easier for him to not put all this pressure on himself. Because he was definitely overdoing it or trying to overdo it with his bat last year. And if you mind that, you know, even though he got 20-20, which is great, but he struck out a lot, he had a low batting average. So you can see the differences in, in the approach that he's taking already. Which And you're right, too, you know, adjusting to do different hitting coaches, that's not the easiest thing in the world, especially if they change midseason. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you What do you think, D-Rod? Uh, yeah, I mean that's that's uh, that's that's yeah, that makes sense. I mean, there's uh, yeah, I mean, well, so then what happened with Volpe? Um, you know, I guess who did he talk to over in the off season? How, so someone said to him, "Hey, you know, uh, you know, just swing level and everything will be fine." Whoever did that, you know, kudos to that person or, or whoever it was. Um, but oh gosh, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, damn it. <laughs> You good? Uh, sorry, I was going to say something about Volpe. I just lost my train of thought. Sorry about that. You got you go ahead. I'm, I'll, be, I'll pick it up. I'm sorry about that. No, nah, you're good. You're good. James Morrison's also adopting parts of analytics, but he's combining with the human element too, which they didn't do last year. Yeah. And you uh, know, let's use certain components of analytics where it's applicable, but let's use our heads too. Let's let's minimize the wasted energy. All right. Right. And extra movements in the swing. Let's tighten up the swings ever, wherever we can, and. It just so happens that guys like Juan Soto have to be happen to be natural, and it's allowing his teammates to just be more relaxed at the plate when they're batting. So there's a lot you of. You think things. Volpe? Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't know what you were done. Go ahead, man. I was going to say I just, I just remember what I was going to say because I popped in my head. Uh, you know, do you think it's better for Volpe, or what's better for the team, and what's better for the player? Is you know I, I know I see a lot of people saying, "Hey, Volpe's going to be 30-30 uh, player," and I said, "That's that's great for Volpe." But is that great for the team? You know, is your leadoff hitter? I mean, the only person I remember that, that was leadoff that was 30 30 was Ricky Henderson, and he's a different kind of player. Um, but, you know, I think Volpe, again, like going back to the Chuck, Chuck Knobloch thing, if he's hitting 12 to 15 home runs and stealing 40 bases, that would be better for the team. And I don't know if the player wants to do that. Yeah. That's a good point, too, because, I mean, look at the beginning of the season so far. Like, a lot of folks were you know, upset and frustrated about the Yankees not really hitting, right? Not firing, all, but they were hitting. They were just hitting at the right times. That's why they kept winning. And they were feeding off each other. So stat accumulation is not as important as team performance. That accumulation, if they, if they do it the right way, is going to happen over time. But they were 10-3 and three firing on half the cylinders, not on all cylinders. When they fire on all cylinders, you know, Judge will get rolling. Remember, he missed 10 days at the end of spring training, so he is behind in terms of his timing. So we do have to give him time, and I'm confident he'll get there. And, we're, and, and thankfully, Stanton's hot, and some of these other guys are hot, So and he's staying healthy. But I do think, you know, collectively, if they're doing what they need to do and maximizing their skill set, then it will be beneficial for the team. There's no need for Volpe to try to go out and hit 40 home runs. Like, the expectation was for, you know, Glaber Torres, after he had that 38 home run year, people expected him to hit 40 home runs every year. And he tried to do that, and it backfired miserably. Yeah. So that's not his skill set. You know, he, got, he, he maximized his talents that one year, and it worked out extremely well. But he hasn't done that since. He hasn't even gotten close. So, you know, I, it looks like, and I think, yeah, I mean, if you can get 15, 20 home runs with 40 stolen bases and a – 260 batting average instead of a 205. I'll take that with good defense for Anthony Volpe any day of the week. Any day of the week, yeah, 100%. Um, what do what you guys think? Pitch? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Right, go ahead to kind of talk, you know, I, I want to mention the, talk about pitching a little bit when, 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 whenever if you want to, and it's your channel. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, no, uh, you're good. You know, because the, the blueprint for Volpe is hey, he's lead off. Yeah, he gets on base, whatever walk, you know, like like Ken said, a walk is as good as a hit, or you said it, right? A walk is as good as a hit. So get on first base, 
right? He's got you got the it's, this is old school baseball. The first baseman's got to got to you know be that first base. You got the hole open it between first and second. Soto comes in, lefty hits a freaking single, first and third, nobody out, right? Second, and then Judge comes up and 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 you know that's the blueprint of it. That's that's kind of how you want it. But uh, but but if Volpe's hitting 40 home runs, then that's not or he's striking out, then that's not going to work you know, so well. So that's the blueprint of of you know wouldn't that be best for for the team? You make a really important. That a walk as good as a hit. What's something that the Yankees have been doing a lot more now? Walking, right? Walking, hundred percent. How, how many of the home runs have they hit been solo? Not many. Yeah, Stanton just hit a, a grand slam. Yeah, they more guys on base now, so these are driving in three, four runs instead of solo shots. And I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on Stanton because he's been on fire lately. Uh, from April sixth through yesterday, he went. He he's gone eight for nineteen. It's a 421 batting average. His on base percent, his on base percentage has been on fire. Uh, he's got a 256 batting average right now. Is this trend going to continue? You think, or you think do, you, do we think that he'll hit a cold streak? Uh, I, if he stays healthy, then a cold streak will probably be not as long. Okay. He, he tends to be unstoppable for a while. Then he gets hurt. And then when he comes back, he stinks for a little while before he heats up again. So there's like a three-headed monster with Jordan and Carl Stanton. But he seems to be healthier. And he's already made some adjustments. He's minimized some of the wasted movement on the back end of his swing with his elbow. He's tightened up his stance in a little bit more efficient manner. So he's been working with James Rosen to minimize a lot of that wasted movement. And there are times where he's swinging at terrible pitches. Definitely. Locked in a heck of a lot more than he's normally locked in. So that's yeah. And he's running a hell of a lot better on the bases. So you can see he's, got, he's more fluid. Yeah, because he, when he started out the season, he was three for 24. And I was like a 120, and he had a 125 batting average, which was like, come on, man. Like, let, you know, I know I was still like, okay, you got to come around. Right. The only thing I've ever said about John Carlo was this. And I, I mentioned it earlier because before the season began, everybody was already talking about DFAing him, benching him put Dominguez in there. We got to see how this guy plays out first. The only thing I ever said about John Carlo was that if he continues on the slump, you got to move him down in the lineup. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that, that was, that was the only thing I said. Then if it continues, if it gets started getting worse, then yeah, maybe you do bench him. So that's a fair point. Yeah. And that's all, that's all I've said. I like what I'm seeing from him so far. You know, um, Judge, granted, his batting average is not great right now. He hasn't really been well at the plate. But the positive thing about Judge is that he's been able to draw walks. Uh -huh. You know, so I hey, I will take walks every day. Every day of the week, I will take a walk. If you don't get a hit, get a walk. You know. Stan, Stan's covering up uh, Judge's warts right now, temporarily. You know, and, and, you know, Judge is hurt and he's a little rusty and he's, you know, and that's fine. I mean, yesterday you sh you saw it a little bit of it with the game because because Judge had two opportunities and it's one game and it's in April, so it's not the end of the world. But he had two opportunities to really at the end of the, toward the last you know the last uh, third of the game to kind of do something and and he didn't you know and you can see he's frustrated you know even even Rizzo when he popped up you know at, at the end he you know he, in, uh, in uh, I think to center field he was upset so. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I think Judge will come around. Just give him some time. I think, you know, it's, like you said, his toe is never going to be 100. percent Yeah. But I was surprised he played uh, Sunday day game after a night game. You know, at one o'clock in center field and not DH and get Grisham in because Grisham hasn't. Where's Grisham? Grisham's like you know persona non grata. You haven't seen him anywhere. You know, he's like he's the leper of the team now. But uh, so I don't know what's going on there. What do you think, Jason? I think. I think we should see. They're, so they're heading to Cleveland now to play the Guardians, and then they're heading to Toronto on the turf to play the Blue Jays. So uh -huh. I could see a DH day from Stanton um, against Cleveland and get Craig Grisham in the outfield. And then I can see a DH day for Soto against the Blue Jays um, mm -hmm. a little bit more, and that way you can have Judge and Grisham in the outfield. So yeah. um, at this point, I think it would be wise for them to – DH start DH them a little bit to give them a little bit of a break, especially going on the turf. So oh, yeah. Um, yeah. it would be nice. Which, and if center, are you putting Judge in right field just for that one game to cover for Soto? Or yeah, if if Soto's DHing, I'm moving Judge to the corner outfield and I'm moving Grisham to center field where it's the most natural. So, um, and it still wouldn't lose any productivity in the outfield, and the defense would still be stellar because you'd have Verdugo in left field too. So, mm -hmm. um. 
but I do think then, now they're heading they're heading away from the stadium. It would be wise to maybe give a guys a DH day, even Stanton an off day on occasion. Uh, that way you can get Cabrera back in the lineup, even if it's a DH. I like Birdie in the infield because he's better defensively than Cabrera. So at the very least, Cabrera's been hot with a bat. We can DH him if we're going to give Stanton an off day. So, yeah. Facts. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. the Yankees batting, because um, look, the, in, in the Marlins series, you had three lefties in a row, and you didn't see Cabrera anywhere near that. I mean, they're just, I, I, you know, I don't know what the, how the numbers look or what, how they're feeling about that. What do you guys think? Well, Bert, Bertie's familiar with the Marlins because he played with them recently. He was traded from them, so he's familiar with, you know, the, the pitchers and the bats. And the fact is the guys that we did have pitching were ground ball pitchers. You want to have better defense in the infield. Birdie's a much better defender than Oswaldo Cabrera. So, but it does stink to give Stick Cabrera all his days because that's that could be just the thing that could turn a guy cold, missing that many days. So, but you know, I could see them doing that with a guy like Cabrera, not doing it with a guy like Judge, or doing it with a guy you know like some of these other guys. So, um, they have the ability to offset Oswaldo Cabrera much easier than, than offsetting Judge and. Mm-hmm. Soto and all these other guys. So I, I understand the logic behind it, but it would be nice to see Cabrera's bat back in there. No doubt. Yeah, yeah. And then real quick, I'm going to wrap it up here shortly. Uh, what bats do you guys want to see improve? And then, uh, you know, obviously we're seeing DJ LeMahieu taking bat in practice. He's going to be traveling with the team. Um, what, what, do you, what do you guys think? What bats need to come around and need to improve? Torres. Okay, yep. Torres, or you you agree with that, D. Rod? Yeah, because it'll it'll lengthen the lineup. Because you know if he's hitting, you know, because you know if Stanton he has one of those nights, the, the days, uh, games where he strikes out over three, because mm-hmm. that might happen. And then Torres is right behind him. Verdugo and Torres behind him, just to, you know to take you know to drive that runner in. Whoever if Soto's on second and you, a big G strikes out, then you got the guys behind him to get him in, uh, mm-hmm. something like that. Um, I, I wanted to mention the the pitching. I think we real yeah. quick. We go ahead. Go ahead. He dodged a bullet with Cole. I mean, look at all the injuries that have been going on here the last couple of weeks. We lost lasagna. We lost this guy. We lost all, everyone. We lost everyone. I mean, look, big name guys. And, you know, just when Cole just said, hey, I got a little something here, and he said something. And then, you know, I would say credit to the medical staff this time where they said, okay, let's do this, let's do that, let's shut it down. And as opposed to like, you know, I mean, thanks, thankfully, if Cole had a concussion, nobody would know about it. So, you know, so that's uh, – that's the interesting thing, but I'm glad that, you know, if we get Cole back here, whatever, even if it's July 4th, for example, you know, that would be, a, it's, a, it's like, a, you know, like a, the cliche is, it's like getting a trade, it's like a trade deadline pickup, you know? And you'd be getting him, you'd be getting Dominguez back at a certain point, you'd be getting a lot of guys back. So a lot of Tommy Canely, Scott E. Frost, they get a lot of reinforcements on their way. So they can only just give the team a shot in the arm. Uh, of of net benefit, and we are ten and three without contributions from Cole and Judge, mm-hmm. without Blake Snell, with ten and three without Yamamoto, with ten and three without Hader, with ten and three without Montgomery. So I, yeah, and you know who I blame for that? I blame Cashman for that one, Jason. Totally blame. Totally blame. <laughs> <laughs> blame Brian Cashman. Fire him. <laughs> but um, yeah. No, nah, all, all good points. And uh, what do you guys what do you guys think, DJ? I'm sure when he's 100 percent and he's officially back, I, I, you know, I think we could all agree he's going to be plugged in to that lineup. I think he'll be the rover over Cabrera at that point. Though Cabrera, Cabrera will probably be the casualty over DJ. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they put him at, in that that spot originally, that utility spot that they got him in what four years ago. That yep. you know, play first, and third, and just cover play you know three four times a week. And go from there. And then at his age now, with his injury, three or four times a week, I think is just right for him. Not don't not too much. You know, not, don't get him in there too much. Yeah. Oh, uh, real, yeah. One, real quick, I just yeah. got this in the mail. Yesterday. The most depressing day of my life yesterday. My AARP card. Oh. Wonderful. I just turned fifty, so yay for me. Yeah, you look great for fifty, man. Well, I'm trying. I'm trying. I feel like I'm 150 right now, but uh, <laughs> you, you want you want to know something, D Rod? So I have three. I have three older brothers, and uh-huh. uh, there's a huge age gap between myself and them. And two of those guys are older than you. Wow, good stuff. Yeah, are they uh, 
But do they, do they teach you about baseball? Do they show you a couple things about ball? Are they, are they baseball guys? Uh, once upon a time, that they, they were the ones that got me into baseball, and you know they, um, you know obviously they they immigrated from a different country, didn't know what uh, baseball was. They saw it on TV, and then they were just like, "Huh, this is an interesting sport." I never it. And <laughs> well, then what they kind of cricket. Yeah, it's like that's a, that's a weird kind of cricket I've never seen. <laughs> well, <laughs> they don't play cricket where I'm from, where, where my family's right, from. Right. So. <laughs> Wrong country, bro. <laughs> uh, I'm trying. I don't know. Yeah, you know, it was a 50-50 we're, shot. We're, yeah, <laughs> but um, no. So you know, they they got me into baseball, and then they, you know, I started watching the Yankees, and they they took me to some games as a kid, and that's how I became a fan. And a lot of the kids that I grew up with around my old neighborhood, you know, a lot of them, most of them were Yankees fans, and so we would just all go out in the summertime play baseball. It was like you know, it was like the Sandlot. Right. And we would just talk baseball. And that's how that's how I got into it. Um, those guys, they don't really I mean, they I don't know how much they follow. I don't think they follow much anymore, but I think once in a while they'll hear it in the news like, hey, the Yankees won or the Yankees got this player or, or whatever. Um, they might hear something like that. But, um, you know, I still follow baseball to this day and talk baseball, as Jason knows, as as some of the other content creators know, as you know, um, you know, so I, I don't know. I love the sport. I love the game. Maybe I'm too calm to be a baseball fan. I don't know, because I definitely don't get all riled up like most people do. <laughs> so, you well, know, you should, I mean, that's baseball is a thinking man's game. That's why, you know, my mm -hmm. first memory, I was 19. I was four years old in 1977. I saw you know, I was in, in my in my in my in my grandparents' house watching, you know, with a big you know wooden box TV where it was like the, you know the TV was uh -huh. the size of a of a sectional sofa, and yeah. I never forget four years old, and I remember Reggie Jackson hitting three home runs, and everyone was going nuts. It was the best time ever, you know. And we lived downtown, so we take the four train up. We that's why I was a Yankees fan because it was closer to my house than than Shea Stadium. I would just go, up, I would pass by, you know. Uh, well, Jason was uh, on, and he's a uh, Hell's Kitchen, so us on the west side. But I go, I take the four train up past him on the east side. And I'd be at the stadium in 20 minutes. And I was like, well, you know, that's good. And I would go on my own as a, as a kid, you know, yeah. for like five bucks, you get a, you get a cheap seat and there you were. And it was, you know, best memories ever, man. I'll never forget that. Yeah, no doubt, man. No, I definitely had some fun memories, like living in New York and watching the games and going to some of the games, especially at the old stadium. Um, that was, that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, feel the time. freaking floor moving. You would feel when people, especially yeah. with the Yankees Red Sox, yeah. which in the 2000s, Especially 2003. And by the way, 2003, the ALCS was the World Series. You know, I think the Red Sox, if the Red Sox would have beat us in 03, the Marlins, I think both teams were so freaking exhausted of playing each other. It was that 19 times, you know, in the regular season and then a seven game, you know, extra inning, you know, playoff series. You know, both teams were freaking, you know, they were spinning. They were, they were, they were you know, they were seeing stars and birds. And, you know, the Marlins just came in just at the right time. It was their year. They had Bartman, you know, in Chicago. And that it was it was destined for them, you know, whichever team. But in my opinion, the, 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 the Yankees and the Sox in that year were the two best teams by far. I mean, there wasn't anyone close. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's it. Sorry, I just sorry it popped in my head. No, it's all good. Go ahead, Jason. But Aaron Boone hit the most famous home run in Yankees history. <laughs> no, how could you forget that? But, um, yeah, I'm going to close it out here. Um, any final thoughts, gentlemen, uh, how, that you all want to add? Um, I think it's, you know, I encourage folks to be patient with some of the guys that are off to slow starts. And just just remember that we have reinforcements coming back. And the Yankees are in a good position right now with a very hard schedule. So that's much harder than the Red Sox, much harder than the Orioles. And the Yankees are in first place. So it's a good place to be. Yep. Of this team is different. The, the personnel of this team is different, so they are better positioned to weather these storms when they when the storms do come. So, and they will come. Let's not be, you know, let's not not think that it's not going to come. But they're better positioned to weather these things. No doubt, no doubt. I like it. I like it. D Rod. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, it's you know, it's a marathon. You know, like Jason's saying. You know, and speaking of marathons, let's not run. Volpe's had. Two good weeks. Everyone wants to sign him to a 25-year extension. Take it easy. You know, we've got this five years left of all this stuff. He's got time. Give him a couple of years. 
And if he's good for two or three years, hey, let's talk signing. If he moves to second, we don't even know if he's our long-term shortstop and you want to sign him to an extension. Slow down. It's yeah. okay. You know, he's got plenty of time. We're getting him on the cheap. You know, if you want to give Soto 50, 60 million, someone else can't get the same, can't get that. You got to, you know, unfortunately, that's just the way the world is. And that's in the baseball's business, as we know, and that's how it, things how it go. But uh, I wanted to ask you, well, two things I want to say real quick. Would you sign, would you sign Bellinger next year if he opts out? Would you sign no. him to play first no. base? No. Just for like no. a short term thing? Like, like no. if he, if, so next year, if he got the same deal now that he got, that, would you offer him? No. Like that same, you know, three year opt out every, every, every year? You wouldn't we have that? Spencer okay. Jones waiting in the wings, man. Um, hey, no, just a question. Just a question. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. No see. doubt. And I respect the question. It's all good. I, it's nothing against Cody Bellinger. I like Cody Bellinger. He, I mean, when his bat is on, it's on. But we got a Spencer Jones waiting in the wings right now. And we got a Jason Dominguez that's chomping at the bit, too. So it's just the Yankees have options within their own system. And again, I like I like Bellinger. I do like Cody Bellinger. But, um, you know, I. Don't need him. Yeah, yeah, and I'm sure Jason feels the same way about. Yeah, I'm absolutely. I mean, it's something to keep in mind financially. If they can sign Bellinger, then they can extend Volpe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Facts. Facts. Perhaps for half the price. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I'm going to close it out with this. The Yankees are 10-3. and three. They're in first place in the division. They're 10-3. They're and three. I have no complaints. They lost yesterday's game. They could have swept. They could have came back. They didn't. It's okay. They're 10 and three, you know, so they won another series. I'll take two out of three every day of the week. And um, they're playing the Guardians starting tomorrow. They're off today. So no Yankees baseball. So hopefully you all find something fun to do today. <laughs> but they're going to play the Guardians next or this weekend and they in Cleveland. Then they travel to Toronto. So with you know, with the Guardians, they're in first place right now. They don't have Shane Bieber, which is a shame. He's another victim to uh, Tommy John. So he's out for the season. He's you know he's I don't his days with as a Guardian is probably over. I, I would assume. So um, you know, I, I think the Yankees can take two out of three against Cleveland, and I, I I think you know the series against Toronto. I think they they could take two out of three there, but. We'll just take it one series at a time right now. But as far as Cleveland, I think they could take two out of three. I, I, I'd i say they'll win the series. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're a lineup. I mean, they don't strike out a lot. They put the ball in play a lot. So, but yeah. And I don't even, I don't know who they have in their rotation beyond Bieber, to be honest with you. You know, they have Lossy cat closing, but I, I can't think of one. Tristan McKenzie, maybe. Um, maybe. I can't. The rotation is not. I don't. I don't think it's. It's. It's not solid. Yeah, I think. I think the Yankees can win that series. I think it's going to be more hostile crowd in Toronto now that the bats mm -hmm. have woken up. Mm -hmm. And they like to give the Yankees fits in Toronto too. So I, I'm yeah. where the record is going to be after this two series because then they have Milwaukee, and then they get Baltimore after that. So yeah, so they got they got some tough. They got some. You know they got some series come tough series coming up, man. So I mean, and the Yankees have been showing up. They've been answering. You know they've been answering. So listen, I'm I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take every single win, every single series victory. I I'm, I I want it. You know I'll take it. Uh, All you know. Did you mentioned pitchers. Since we're talking about pitchers, real quick, I just thought about something. It's a question someone asked me. He says, "Why do people? Why does everyone dislike pitchers?" What do you because mean? They're always breaking. Well, it was a joke. I'm I'm trying to set up a joke, but why? Do you, because they're they're always breaking balls. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. And um, That's a you know, D Rod original. Can you believe that? D Rod yeah. original, my man. Uh, but you know, there there was I was, you know, I was talking with a couple of the or one of the content creators. I was talking with Maza actually, Jason, about these injuries and pitchers. And I know we talked about it a little bit with Hector over there on the live stream a couple of days ago, but. I want to do a, a a show where it's like I I get I want to get Tats and uh, Maza involved, maybe get you involved and get kind of talk about this, you know, because it, this is it, it's bad. These injuries to pitchers are bad. I know, uh, like Sunil was busting balls about the Houston Astros starting rotation being in shambles right now. He's like, ha ha, Astros. It's like, yeah, you know, look, those guys are still players. I mean, it, it it's it just sucks because whether it's a rival or not, it, it's just. These guys getting hurt. It's bad for the team, bad for the sport, uh, bad for the fan base. You know, it's bad for business. 
So, you know, I really wanted to, you know, do a show where these injuries are happening and it's happening at, a, at an alarming rate. And uh, we, I want to get everybody, I wanted to get everybody's thoughts on that and just kind of shoot ideas at each other as to why, you know, why it's happening. Major League Baseball is talking about how it's not the pitch clock, but I beg to differ. That is definitely contributing, right? I don't want to 100% blame the pitch clock, but I feel like it's contributing. But these guys are throwing at a lot higher velocity. But as far as recovery and health and taking care of their bodies, I don't know that these guys are doing that, right? So there, it, I feel like it's a it's a mix of it, it's a it's a it's a mix of things. It's a series of things. But um, you know, well, well can I say the biggest thing is yeah, you're right. I think that's the straw. The pitch clock is the straw that broke the back, right? The camel's back. But it, more than anything, it's the competition. It's Kind of the cutthroat thing. It's like, hey, if I'm a, if we're all three of us are pitchers and I can throw 100 and you guys can't, who are they going to call up? They're going to want me because that's what they want right now. So mm -hmm. the philosophy has to change where where you've got to say, hey, 90 can still get a guy out instead of 100 as well. You can get get you can still get a guy out at 90, 90 93 versus 100. But yeah. in the competition, it's like, hey, you know, I need to, I need money. I want to make money. I got you know, I want to you know, I mean, I've been around for a long time. I'm trying to make a couple of bucks, and that it's it's kind of that, that thing more than anything. And there's a fan the guys that throw hard, right? I mean, yeah. the biggest complaints about Clay Holmes, he wasn't a strikeout pitcher, mm -hmm. right? He puts mm -hmm. the ball in contact. Well, Mariano Rivera put the ball in contact all the time. He's the greatest yeah. closer of all time. So there's a fixation with Classe and Hayter and all these guys. I understand, but Clay Holmes has better stats than all these guys. Yeah, he does. He does. There was a side by side comparison, real quick, with Hader and and Holmes. Holmes had the better numbers, but um, I wanted and to you add, throw less pitches. Less pitches when you pitch the contact, you throw less pitches too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, when you're, strike, when, you're, when you're a strikeout pitcher, you got to throw at least three, three, three strikes. You know, that's that's a perfect inning in the Macklin inning. So, and you're not that's not going to happen very often. So you're throwing 20, 30 pitches in an inning. You know. And if you're a starter, that's, you know, that's why you're out of the game in, 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 in the fifth inning. Yeah. And then Jason, about what I was talking about, like, would you agree that it's a series of things with the pitch clock and guys throwing harder and people not, and these guys not taking the rest and the, not taking care of their health. I mean, what, what what's your qu quick yeah. take on that? One of the, you know, and I, and I brought it, like we were in this tats chat, like we brought, I brought up Roger Clements and Nolan Ryan. Well, these guys were, workhorses during the season they were a league of their own yeah and they're they're known for that and they you know these guys driven power through their legs which mm -hmm. less stress on their elbows and their shoulders right so and we how often do we hear now about crazy workout routines and crazy fitness we don't really hear it that often for baseball players right we heard it with guys that don't really have elbow problems and it's, that's the reason why these guys are power pitchers. They were power pitchers for two decades, right? Um, and they they worked hard during the season. Not only in the offseason, they worked hard during the season too, tirelessly. So I think it's an important balance that is likely not utilized as much as I'd like it to be. And I think you know a good idea would be how, how can we preserve these guys' health? How can we keep them healthy? How can we lengthen their careers to minimize these injuries? Because the majority of the aces are on the aisle right now. It's crazy. <laughs> oh, it's, it's crazy how many guys are on the aisle. Yeah, and is the no one's even starting pitchers are pitching from the stretch. There's no even. I mean, Justin Verlander is one of the few because he's been around for a while. You know, he does a windup. He moves around. He gets his body moving. You know, if you're in the stretch, you're putting more stress on your arm because your legs. You know, you're not. You know, you you got to use that rubber, the pitching rubber. To get it, you know, that's why you're in the wind up. You kind of move around, you build up momentum so you can, you know, go to the plate. And but if you're in the stretch, you're just you're pushing off your leg. You're not using your leg as much, and you're using more of your arm. You know, I, and you notice, you know, they, that you know the pitching coaches are are trying to minimize movement so that they can they can have the same consistent repetition when they're throwing the ball. But when you're doing that, you're putting more stress on your arm because you're using less of your legs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like I said, uh, well, I, I want to do a show so, uh, solely on that. Uh, I, I want to set that up. I'll, I'll, ha I'll just have to get in touch with, you know, guys like, you know, Tats, Mazza, Jason. I'd love to get you in on that, too, because uh, we could we could probably knock it out. We th This is that this conversation is probably going it, to it's going to be a long one. And, you know, we'll have to I'll have to save that for another show. But um, 
I am going to close it out. D-Rod, good to see you, man. I'm, I'm glad you jumped on. It's been a long time. Uh, oh, it's been a while. Three of us, the three of us, won. the last time we were on together, I was on with you. It was the three of us. You, know, huh. you were in your car. You know, that was oh. like three, two or three years ago. I think you were yeah. in your car. It was the first one coming on. You were the last one. Jason was just about to end his stream. You know, we were on for like two hours, and I was on yeah. with him, you know, chatting. And then you popped in, and then I think it was just the three of us, the only ones that were talking for another like 45 minutes. And so that's it how happened. the bond was. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, bro. Well, uh, I don't know. When, when are you going to start your channel with the with the Mazda? When are you doing that channel with Mazda? Oh, the kick rocks and get bent. So we're going to do <laughs> – it's going to be a fun show. <laughs> oh, I, when you, when you said know. that, I think, man, that show sounds uh, – I think oh, that's yeah. the three of us, you, me, and Mazda will have a good time. And Jason, too, the four of us, and oh, everybody dude. else will be a blast. Yeah. Oh, dude, yeah. we're, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to invite some uh. guests. And, uh, yeah, we're. I think our fresh, first episode, it, it's uh, May 28th. Uh, yep, May 28th is what uh Mazda and I were shooting for, but just keep on the lookout. It's good, like I said, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but that'll be our first episode. But um, we'll we'll keep you in the loop, bro. But um, we'll go from there. Uh, D Rod, I don't know if you're going to go back into the closet, but whatever you do, have a good day. <laughs> Very comfortable, man. You'd be surprised how comfortable it is in there. Well, that's cool. Well, I don't want to know what you're doing there, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, D Rod, uh, I don't know. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Here, and I'll have Jason close it out with me, folks. Um, thank you all so much for coming on. This is almost a two hour show. Thanks for sticking it out, Jason. Thanks for coming on. Thank you to everybody who showed up. I know Donnie C was waiting in the back, but he left. Um, I apologize, Donnie C. Um, but everybody that came on, Johnny TD, Donnie Clark, D-Rod, FL Diver. Uh, I had Anthony Garcia – or, yeah, Anthony Garcia was in here. Richie was in here. Uncle Tats. Um, if I did not say your name, I apologize. And um, we'll, I'll, I might go live on Sunday. I don't know yet. But just keep on the lookout. And everyone, have a wonderful day. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your weekend. Be safe out there. Take care of each other. Stay healthy. and. Uh, Peace. Peace, King.